So here's an image that I captured from a DJI movie, a drone that I was using. And I really like the color of the background. It's kind of nice. I'm not so worried about the cables. I could remove the cables little by little. But for today, I just want to talk about the dodge and burn tool. i just like to show you that here's a little dodge and burn tool. All right? And what I'm looking or hoping to accomplish with this is I'm hoping to kind of create a little more light around here. So once again, just using the dodge and burn tool and then coming down to my keyboard and hitting right and left brackets, I can make my brush bigger or smaller. So I'm going to take a bit of a medium sized brush and I'm going to pretend that I have a light source coming from this direction. So I'll maybe come down a little bit and I'm just going to give a nice little sweep to the side of the face like there was a light source there. Maybe even just a little bit on the edge of the hand to give a feeling like there's some light hitting it there. And once again, I'm going to come down one more time and I'm going to give myself a little light. Just enough so that I'll give it a feel that there's some light coming from here and then it kind of fades out. And you can tell light has a kind of way of bouncing around and... All of a sudden, I'm giving my photograph a lot more depth of field and character. Same thing with the hand. I can just touch it a little bit. Now, to me, using the dodge and burn tool is always about not using too much of the dodge and burn tool. So what I want to do is I want to take down the size just a little bit. Maybe I even want to just swipe my fingers. Just give it a little feel like, oh, there's some light that's playing around there. But as you can see right over there, it's already too much. So I'm going to go control Z and control Z. And I'm going to just leave this little bit of light on the fingertip there. So now I have a sense of some light that's coming from this direction. If I want to play around with it a little more, I can always say, you know what, let's bring up the size of this. And one more time, just burn it a little more this way. And... Now I'm seeing a little bit more detail on this side of the face. And the thing for me is always, is it believable? Is it believable? So my head kind of goes that way. So a nice little soft brush following the contour of my head is nice. Now here's a little tiny trick that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. A little tiny line here, holding down the shift key and knocking it to there. Go here, shift key here. And you can see I just put a very, very slight hint of light. Let's take a closer look at that and see what I see what I mean. Let's see. So I'm gonna hit control Z again and control Z and you'll see now I'm just taking my little dodge tool again and I'm coming here and I'm saying, oh you know what, that's maybe even too big. And if I click once, hold down the shift key, I'm gonna get a real straight line. Boom. And now you see how I've created just a little bit of light there. One more time. Click here, hold down shift key, bam. And that might be too much of a line. Let's see. I can always go step out. And it, it, it may not. It may actually be believable. And it gives the nose a little more credibility. Like there is actually light there. It's bouncing a little bit off the nose as well. We dodged this pretty good. And I got a little bit of roll in the head. And it kind of creates a little bit of light. And once again, these are very low resolution screen grabs from video. And I just want to make a quick post to a website. I don't necessarily want to do printing with this. So let's just say we've used the dodge tool, right? And dodge tool worked great, but now we're going to have to use the burn tool because look, you can see a little bit of error here. Now in a web-based situation, I really wouldn't even care too much about this. And, but you know, just for argument's sake, let's talk about the burn tool. And here I am going down here, and I'm saying, I like to hold, I like to press once, hold down the shift key, and keep a straight line. And as you can see, we start burning back the original colors, bringing back that darkness, which kind of creates, oh, I'm gonna do Command Z, Command Z, Command Z only going to try to burn around the areas that were made light by the overkill of the dodge tool. 
Now, you can go crazy with the dodge and burn tool all you want. I mean, you can just go to town. Come back here. Go back to the dodge tool. Get rid of some of this extra light. But once again, you know, at a certain point, you have to say, when is enough enough for a Facebook photo for something I'm going to use, you know, one time and I'm going to toss. So once again, just taking a look at a little bit back, you can see we got rid of some of that extra blue or some of the darkness back of the hair made him look very younger. And that's all good stuff. So I'm kind of happy with that. So that's the end of this little quick tutorial on using the dodge and burn tool. It's a great way to kind of like save photographs that otherwise might be kind of lost, right? So there you have it. And thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial.